talking of mums, also on the show this morning, you can forget Kylie, we've got the original Australian queen of pop with us. And mum, that's Olivia Newton-John throughout the morning this morning. Two she performances, hasn't, She hasn't two. changed a bit. No, hasn't. I mean, she's, well, shall I say it? No, I better not say how old she is, because she might not come in. Mm. Tell me. 59. Flipping heck. It's amazing. <laughs> Now then, you may not know that Olivia Newton-John was actually born in England, because a lot of people think she was born in Australia, but she recorded her first single here nearly 40 years ago. Now she has 32 albums, 53 singles to her credit, and she is back in this country and on our sofa. Lovely to see you. Oh, good morning. You still look like a little girl to me. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. You haven't aged at all. Oh, you're very nice. Still I, that, think I think that. it's that beautiful big smile. I think that keeps everything stretched. Yes, it does. <laughs> keeps holding up. That gorgeous, <laughs> big, generous mouth. You do. You still look well. Are you still oh, enjoying you. work? Because you're so driven. I mean, you could have given up and had an easy life and had a lovely time on a beach in I Australia. Know. What am I doing? No. I, <laughs> I say that every year, but yeah. every year something inspires me to do something else and I really enjoy it I yeah. must yeah well, you I'm think you must it. do and now listen yeah. people are going to be enjoying your new album soon because you do have a new album out which I is do. why you're here it's called indigo uh, women of song um, composed of covers are these some of your favorite songs yeah yeah these are some, this is like a tribute album to these women that inspired me when I was starting out um, for instance Joan Baez mm. when I was you know, like 15 I used to sing folk songs and I could sing hers because they were really easy songs and um, mm. and pretty songs as well and then I won a talent contest with anyone who had a heart which is Scylla, Scylla, Scylla song. Black and I loved her and and Dion Warwick also recorded it. it's a bit Bacharach song and so I won a talent contest and that brought me to England so that was an important song. Oh that was back in 1965. Yes around then and then my dad um, the first album that I was ever bought was the Nina Simone album yeah. and the song Summertime was on there and the very very first little television show I did I sang Summertime with uh, my boyfriend who was playing guitar on this audition show where they had like three gongs and a hook and you're off mm. and uh, so it, they're all songs like that Doris Day song I've got um, a tribute Minnie to Ripperton, Karen Carpenter. Loving Minnie you. Ripperton. Is that because she's Oh, oh, she was amazing. Right that I didn't do that bit. That. Oh, you didn't? I was wondering if you did that bit. No, only, <laughs> Minnie was the first woman I'd ever met who died of breast cancer, and I, and I really respected her as a woman and as a writer, and I yeah. always loved that song, so that was a, a tribute to her as well. Yeah, and, and obviously you've, you've brought the subject up um, about breast cancer, which you found out you had back in 1992, I think yes, it was, wasn't it? Whether it would be etched on your mind anyway. Mm -hmm. What was that like, when you, that moment when you found out? Um, it was an, a very interesting time, a very difficult time. My father was diagnosed with cancer the same week and the day that I found out, it was like a week before and I went out to see him and then when I got back I found out that I had it and then he passed away on that weekend. So it was all, everything happening at once. Mm. Obviously a very, a very confronting time. Yeah. Um, but I made it through, thank goodness, and I'm very fortunate. Yeah, yeah. and as I say, you look fitter than ever. Listen, thank we're you. going to talk to you more later on. I know you're going to be okay. singing for us this morning as well, twice, which we're very pleased about, but for Ooh, now, okay. lovely to see you. Thanks <laughs> thank very you. much. All right. And uh, more from Olivia throughout the programme, singing in just about five minutes' time. Uh, if you go to our website, gm.tv, you'll be able to find out more about how to get your hands on those self-examination kits and sign copies of Olivia's new album. If you've had a relationship that's just broken up or you've been betrayed in a relationship and somebody wants to get back with you, here now is one of the all-time great bitter love songs, I think. Yeah, sung Miss... by Olivia Newton-John. Yes. Cry Me a River. Here we go. Yeah. 
sorry for being so untrue. Well, you can cry. You drove me, you nearly drove me out of my head While you never shed a tear Remember, I remember all you said Told me love was too plebeian Told me you were through with me Just to prove you do Come on and cry me a river Cry me a river I cried a river over you Ooh, going to take a trip back down memory lane to Thank the you, Olivia. grease days the grease when, when she comes when back she worked in a cafe chat. anyway <laughs> indigo women of song is the new album by olivia newton john an album of songs originally performed by the greatest female singers Indigo, Women of Song, the new album by Olivia Newton-John, out now. Right, um, still to come, someone um, that, oh, well, he is a fan, we know he's a fan, Olivia Newton-John. The neutron bomb exactly. herself, yeah. You, well, she's, you'll probably be, be doing your web chat when she yeah, comes yeah, in, but never she'll mind. she'll be here yeah. after the break. Olivia 
Newton John still hanging around. Most people have been bored and switched off ages ago, but here she is, still here. <laughs> it's so nice for you to join us this morning. Oh, and, it, and of course, naturally, it takes me back, and you know what I'm going to say, don't you? Yes. Yes, to Greece. You were a enough. child. You were just no, a I girl. wasn't a child. Funnily enough, when I went to see it in 1978, I was 16, and it was a bit of a scandal because I was seeing a 28 year old man. <laughs> I didn't like him very much, and I actually was more interested in the film than him, but really takes me back and do you get annoyed that people still refer to those days or oh, of course you're proud not. of it oh absolutely proud of it oh of course not no it was a wonderful time in my life and it was a wonderful time for many people yeah those well, years and and everyone's reflection on you know the, the older ones who remember that time period and those that think they do because they saw the movie in the 70s and feel they were there in the 50s and now it's a classic i know it's amazing really and at the time you weren't so sure about taking the part were you no i was very reluctant actually in the beginning because i'd made a film and it was a disaster and was worried about doing another one because my musical career was doing well but thank goodness I, I asked if we could do a screen test with myself and john and they said yes and we did the screen test I said well if I like it I'll do the movie yeah. strange way of doing things but I was lucky that I thought that it worked and I looked at and myself they liked and, it yeah because I was worried about you know being um looking right for the part and it was so, oh, so no, I just <laughs> remember that everyone wanted to be you then I and mean, you were stick thin in that black outfit with the leggings and the, and the boob know. tube thing just amazing <laughs> what do you think yeah, when you back. see that, that I mean that stuff is back thing, now isn't it this stuff is all back, and I just bought these earrings the other day, and I just realised that they're actually very similar to the ones that I had wore then. Because all '70s stuff is back. Yeah, absolutely, it's wild, it isn't is. it? Well, that was a great decade for you, wasn't it? You started it was off great. sort of doing Cliff's shows, yes. yeah, Cliff and the yes. Shadows. You cracked America big time as well. Mm -hmm. and there was Greece. What a decade that was yeah, for you. Yeah, it was a great decade. And then the 80s, it, you, I remember physical, actually. Yeah, and the 80s was fantastic. First of all, I had physical, and most importantly, I had my daughter Chloe. in 86. So it was, uh, that was the best decade. Yeah. And is Chloe, I believe, writing as well now? She's, She's writing and singing. singing. She has an album coming out in around June. Oh, yeah. What, yeah. what did you think of her leanings toward the music business? Well, you know... It's not surprising. I mean, she's been brought up in a household, show business household, and that's all she's really known. I was obviously hoping she would go to university or do something. Like my mother hoped that I would, yeah. and I didn't do it either. So it's not a big surprise. But, you know, I just want her to follow her passion. I think that's all you can hope for with your children, that they follow their passion no matter what that is. And that they're happy. And that they're happy, yeah, exactly. Well, is there anything about the industry, though, that you, having known it so well, would, would warn her of or have warned her of? Well, you know, I think I was always lucky that I was surrounded by good people, and so I, I think she has good people around her, and I'll keep a, I'll keep an eye with it on that interfering it's as much as I now, can. It's harder though, isn't it? I think yeah. it's a lot harder for youngsters. It's a tough business now. now. You know, when I started out, they were building careers, and your first album wasn't expected to be the one now. No. You know, these poor young kids, they have one album. If it doesn't make it, they kind of lose their contract. It's very tough. And that can cause all sorts of problems, because, yeah. you know, you're suddenly catapulted into the limelight. All the interviews are in mm. the papers and then suddenly you're branded a failure after yeah, one really, outing. It's very unfair, I think, really. I, feel, I find it's very difficult for them. Luckily, Chloe's been with it, seen it her whole life, and she's done movies when she was nine, and she's done, a, you know, she's done little bits and been around it her whole life, so it won't be a big, a big jump for her. It'll be an adjustment, and mm. I think she'll do very well. She's a very talented girl. Oh, she must yeah, take after her mum. <laughs> thank, thank you. It's been really lovely oh, to see her. I wish you. she could stay longer, but... Have to leave Thank you. All right. Well, it's been nice. Next time, eh? Yeah. All right. Lovely. Thanks, Thanks, Fiona. Thanks very much. Right. Oh, but uh, hot news, I can tell you there will be more from Olivia and LK today. So if you go to our website, gm.tv, you'll also be able to find out more how you can get your hands on self-examination kits um, after uh, Olivia's cancer scare, breast cancer scare. Uh, she endorses those. And we've got signed copies of her new album. My new best friend. No. One woman who never seems to age, Olivia Newton-John, of course. You saw her earlier on talking to Eamon and Fiona. She's here performing a classic for her much-loved movie, Grease, hopelessly devoted to you. Guess mine is not the first heartbreak my eyes are not the first to cry I'm not the first to know There's just no getting over you You know, I'm just a fool Who 
was willing to sit around and wait for you. But baby, can't you see there's nothing else for me to do? I'm hopelessly devoted to you. Album Indigo that's out right now, looking like a teenager.